The first step in developing open courses is to create a course map. A course map is the first rough draft of a course, something that a writing instructor might call a mind map. The idea behind course mapping is to outline your ideas for what materials the students will interact with and what they will do to demonstrate they've developed the skills you're planning to teach. In course mapping for open courses, the course map also defines exactly what materials will be used in your course so that open education experts can easily review the licenses on all of your materials. Course maps can also help you see where you might need to create or find new and different materials. This video will describe the course mapping process that we use in the Pierce Open Project at Pierce College. The process uses a course mapping tool shared by our colleagues at Lumen Learning. It has been slightly modified because we add a column for enabling outcomes. This blank template shows the information that the course map will collect. The two most left columns are information that is defined by the college. We have college-wide adopted outcomes, which can be found in the course manager system. It's a good idea to check your outcomes every quarter just to be sure they didn't change. Once your course outcomes are entered, you can begin defining the type of assessment that you will probably use to assess each outcome. You don't need to fully write the assessment, and in the early stages, you might have more than one assessment idea per outcome. In some courses, you might assess the same outcome more than once. You might also use the same assessment to demonstrate multiple outcomes. Remember that you cannot assess the students on something that you don't explicitly teach unless you can reasonably assume that the student has acquired the skills you're asking them to demonstrate in other classes or places in their lives. In the current example, the sketch assessment for outcome number one asks participants to write a rubric. I am assuming knowledge about writing rubrics that my students might not have. For this reason, the course map includes a section on enabling outcomes. List concepts and ideas that students will need to learn about in order to demonstrate the larger outcomes. The next step of course mapping is to find the materials that you would most like students to interact with in order to meet learning outcomes. Please be sure to keep the URL for the material that you find. Enter the URL into the column marked OER provided. Next to that, be sure to state what section of the resource the student should use. In the example here, you can see that the material used is all one source. That source is a remixed book on the Lumen platform. If you would like, we can arrange to do a remix like this one. Please contact your Open Education Project Manager to talk about the remix process. The final column asks you to define the open license applied to the OER you have selected. Please be specific in the license that you type here. When we review your course materials, we will need to ensure that all materials are licensed appropriately for our project. We prefer if you use materials that are Creative Commons Attribution or Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike licensed. You might need more than one resource to help students meet course learning objectives. It is okay to add rows and indicate the outcome number when you have multiple outcomes. As you see in this example, there is a second resource for the first outcome. Once you have an idea of the materials used for your course and you have a collection of assessment ideas, you can decide on progression. Define the order in which your course will be taught and assign module numbers for each major outcome. You can cover several outcomes per module or you can have one module per outcome. The final step of course mapping is to review the map to make sure that the amount of work you are expecting from students is appropriate for the amount of credit offered by your course. You might want to change assessments or cut down on some readings if the course seems out of balance. You can even ask a colleague to review what you have sketched out in your course map so that you can have some sense of if you are on the right track before you begin to collect your course in a more formal collection. For questions about course mapping, please contact the Center for Engagement and Learning or the Pierce Open Project. We're happy to help you with your course map and overall course design projects.